Greetings fellow residents of Hastings, Minnesota. My name is Alec Matheson and you are watching Strangely Local, a Hastings Community TV original series. Say, are you familiar with the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? I'm sure you are, but why am I talking about Christmas when we're still in October and getting ready for Halloween? Because my friends, tonight we'll be hearing a strange tale about a deer that prances on the side of the fantastic in a story told to us by one of our own, Mr. Nathan Embry. Let us now take a listen to how Mr. Embry managed to escape a dire situation thanks to a very special deer. I was finishing my landscaping job at Veterans Park and was anticipating my bus to arrive at exactly seven on the dot. Fifteen minutes later, I gave the bus company a call, but I wasn't able to get a hold of anyone. So I decided to wait it out just a bit longer. I waited, and when the time read eight, I decided to try and call an Uber driver. I still could not reach anyone, so I decided to walk home. I began my journey through the woods. I remembered a shortcut, and I thought the trail would make my trip a quicker one. The crickets chirped, and the flies buzzed in rapid speed in the air. The air was absolutely humid. No amount of shade by the trees could block the heat of the sun. It was not too long that I began to notice that my shadow became less visible the more I ventured. I began to hear unsettling noises from all around. Animal sounds for certain, but unsure of where they belonged. Was it the sound of predators? Or was it the sound of the approachable and friendly types? I did not want to wait around to find out. I began to pick up the pace. I downloaded the flashlight app in my phone. I turned it on and it acted as my light source for some minutes. But then things got dark. My phone died. What luck, right? So there I was, in the dark. And not to my surprise, I tripped and fell to the ground. My glasses came right off, and you see, I'm nearsighted, so things in the distance are a bit harder to make out. And, well, what I noticed as I picked myself up were two bright white lights. They were definitely not stars. They were not a reflection in the water, and the moon was on the other side of the sky. I put my pair of glasses back on and saw the pair of lights get closer and closer. I didn't move a muscle. I had difficulty making things out. Just then, the light shut off. The silence was so intimidating that I did not dare utter a sound. Even as I breathed in and out, I did so very slowly. Then another set of eyes presented themselves, only this time, they were bright red. Wasn't this the same night we had that really tough thunderstorm? Yes, yes it was. A huge clap of thunder woke all the woods in that moment. And for a tiny half of a second, light had returned to the woods. And I could see a glimpse of what those red eyes belonged to. I could not make it out enough to offer appropriate classification, but the creature resembled something of a wolf and had its fangs wide open. Rain began to drop from the sky. I slipped on my back and the creature came closer and closer, ready to strike. Boom! Lightning struck again, and those pair of bright white lights appeared once more. In the next glimmer of light, I saw that they belonged to a deer. A deer? Yeah, a deer. They leapt right in front of me and went head to head against the thing with the bright red eyes. I got up and ran away from the scene. I ran so fast, I did not stop to breathe. I tripped on a rock and fell down onto my face again. I passed out for just a few minutes. When I woke, I heard sounds. I turned over and saw the very same deer that had saved my life, looking at me directly with those bright white eyes. I was at a loss for words. But something in my gut told me that I shouldn't be afraid of what could come next. The deer slowly motioned its head to its left. My attention followed that direction and it was then that I saw the dairy store. I was relieved. I was getting closer to home. I went to pet the deer as a way to say thank you, but it moved away and went back into the woods. And its eyes faded again in the dark. I went but a few blocks away from there and I made it home in time to see the news. I've told everyone this fantastic tale since it happened this summer, and I thought this was the right kind of platform to retell it. Thank you. No, thank you, Nathan, and have a great day. You as well, Alec. Well, what a deer that deer turned out to be, am I right? Thank you for tuning in tonight. We'll be back with more Tales of the Fantastic next weekend on Strangely Local. Till then, Hastings, keep things strange. <laughs>